Well, hi everyone, how are you doing today? In this video, we're going to learn how to compare a model with a porn cloud. If you wish to compare a model with a porn cloud, the first thing you have to do is obviously importing the model. So we'll just do that, go right here into project, add the object, and import the model, which in my case is this one. I'll click add to app. Here I'll see this window. I know that my model is correctly placed and everything from the beginning, so I'll just keep the original position, which is 0, 0, 0, but the point cloud is also 0, 0, 0, so I'll just align perfectly, import object, there we go. As you can see, both are perfectly aligned. Then, when you wish to compare the model to the point cloud, what you'll do is go up there, click on the magnifying glass, these are the advanced tools, and then again, in the submenu, we'll click on the magnifying glass that is analyzes. It will open this window, which will allow you to create your comparison. So just give it a name, in my case, I'll go comparison, because I'm not going to search too far for this, but you can enter the name that you want. Then you can select the point cloud that you wish to compare, and the model that has to be compared to it. So I'll select this one because it's the one that I just imported. Here you can change the density of the analysis. So if you go way down there, it will compare most of the points from the point cloud. It just means that it will compare one point every 0 0.002 centimeter, which in my case is going to be all of the points. In my case, I'll select 0 0.0144 it is usually enough to have a good comparison while still having it fairly quickly. And then you just have to click on Analysis. It will request to spend tokens, so you just have to click on Spend Tokens and it will start the analysis. Once the analysis is done, you'll receive an email and you can go back into the project. Here, you can go back into Tools, Analysis and open this window back. Except this time, instead of creating a new analysis, what we'll do is load the one that was created before. So we'll just go into history, and here you have the list of all of your comparisons that were done before. In my case, I'll load the first one right here, click on it, and it will load the analysis straight away. You can see here colors have appeared. Instead of having the classic RGB point cloud, I now have a red, green, yellow, orange-ish colors. So I, I'm just going to do one thing and I encourage you to do the same thing. You cannot, because you cannot see the shapes too much here. If I look at this box, it is kind of an old red box, but I don't really see the, the angles and everything. So what you can do to fix this is go into settings right here, then go into point cloud and enable the EDL eye dome lightning. So just click on this and close it. What it will do is it will sharpen the edges of the point cloud. So here now you can see the box is actually a box and you can see where the edges are and everything. So I always strongly encourage you to enable this feature when you're using the comparison. Okay. Now here on the left, what you will see is three options, all points, inside tolerance or outside tolerance, tolerance that you can change right here in the bottom. By default, it will be minus three centimeters and plus three centimeters, but depending on your needs for that specific project, you can just take it and move it to customize it to your needs. In my case, I'll go two centimeters and then minus two, for example. Then I have changed my tolerance from minus two to plus two centimeters. I can see that 51.4% of the point cloud and the model are correct, okay, in that tolerance. If I change it and say now it's minus five and then plus five, in that tolerance from minus five to plus five, I have 74.61% of the point cloud and the model that are colliding and that are correct. Here you can see I have the red and the green and the blue and everything. Green means that it's perfectly aligned, and then red means that it's not aligned at all, that the element just doesn't exist, which is pretty much the same thing with the blue. The only difference is blue isn't the minus, so that means that it's inside of the model, whereas the red is outside of it. And then you'll have a shade going from the green to the red, where it's not perfectly aligned, but we're still in the tolerance. Okay, so this is still in the plus five tolerance here, that yellow orange ish, but it's not perfectly aligned as the green is. If you wish to only see what is correct, you can click on this button inside tolerance to only see what is inside of your tolerance. Now you'll see you'll have a double tolerance. You have the original one, okay, the minus five plus five that I had before, and now I'll also have a minus 10 plus 10. 
the minus 10 plus 10 represents the points that I'm going to be able to see. Okay, so if I get this to minus 20 and plus 20, I'll see points appear. But this does not correspond to the shade. The shade will be from minus 5 to plus 5. Everything that is from 5 to 10 is going to be red. It's just what's going to be seen. And now last thing is outside tolerance where you will only see what is not correct. And here you will only see that minus 10 plus 10 tolerance from what you can see or not see. And so you'll only have two colors, red and blue. Once an analysis has been made once, you can load it as many times as you want and you don't have to repay those tokens every time. It's just for the first time when you create the analysis, you'll have to spend those tokens and then it's forever for you to reload the analysis as many times as you want. Once you have loaded an analysis in the viewer, you will find it in the right page right here. So if I click on this and then go into actions, I will have an analysis button that will allow me to reopen this window directly without having to go through the two magnifying glass and then to history to load it and so on and so on. That also means that you can save a version of the project with this enabled. So for example, I could I could save a version with this display enabled. And so anybody who has access to the public sharing could visualize the analysis and see what is missing, what is not missing from the model.